the Shonen Jump rookies have been falling one by one, and it's now it's finally the time to fill back the magazine with four brand new series. And that means that I'm back here to read their first chapter and give you my thoughts on it, as well as what I think are their chances of survival. If you want to stay up to date with the brand new weekly Shonen Jump series, then this is the channel to be. Today we're taking a look at the first two new series of this brand new match, and it's a batch full of returning mangaka with two very big names right from the get-go. The first is Tenmaki Cinema by the duo behind Food Wars and I gotta say this is my first time getting into a manga from theirs with the exception of the one piece spin-off that they've done and I was pretty excited for it. But before we get into the manga I want to take a closer look at the Shonen Jump debut cover because there's something that I noticed and that was this girl right here. <laughs> This being a manga about cinema and movie making, it's already going to inevitably draw some comparisons to Shonen Jump's Black Sheep, Act Age. My hopes being that it can move out of Act Age's shadow and become what it could not. But it does not help at all when you straight up put a Yonage clone in the debut cover. But alas, what is this manga about? Well, it's about Ajimi Shinishi, a massive cinephile who loves to watch and review movies but has no interest in trying to make one himself, kinda like me in manga. What is not like me and manga is the fact that Shinichi is being haunted by a ghost of a teenage screenwriter, one that wants Shinichi's help to finish his writing a script, as he died right in the middle of working on a movie with a very famous and talented director. The problem being that the director died 20 years ago. Turns out that Tenmaki, the ghost, passed away in 1993, 30 years ago. Oh god. I was born 30 years ago. Without a chance to make his dream movie, Tenmaki is left floating in this world with no clear way to be fulfilled and pass on to the next. At first I tried to make him watch a bunch of movies, but after a while of consuming everything that streaming services have to offer, it becomes obvious that while fun, it's not going to help Tenmaki in any way. But the solution appears towards the end of the chapter in the form of our Yonagi-like character. Also, an actress, Kurai is quite a celebrity in the school, having appeared in various movies since she was a kid. Shinichi can't even seem to get close to her to talk, but Tenmaki needs only to watch from afar to be filled with a brand new idea for a movie, one that he wants so much to put on paper that it completely possesses Shinichi, exhausting him until the script is done and in front of Kurai. Tenmaki, as Shinichi, asks her to be part of his movie, directed by Shinichi himself before he passes out completely and wakes up in the infirmary. To everyone's surprise, the chapter ends with Kurai visiting him and accepting the role, meaning that Shinichi is now, for better or for worse, a movie director. Honestly, even though there were high expectations going into this one, I think they filled it for the most part. The main character is fun and works quite well, but the star of the chapter is easily Tenmaki. His design is simply amazing. Well, the art in general is amazing. I was already aware of it coming into the series, but it really is so good. Kurai as well needs some props. Of course, by being from a duo that work on an heavily etchy manga, the girls are bound to be gorgeous, but all my complaints about looking like Yonagi are out of the window once I actually saw her in the manga. She actually looks like her own character, which is good. It also seems like it's going to focus more on the process of making a movie from the beginning to end, so it seems like it's different enough for Mactage to stand on its own. It's main rival in the magazine, though it's going to be a kind of Banashi, and what a rival to have. Easily the biggest hit of 2022, it's safe to bet that Akane Banashi isn't going anywhere. Its chances of survival are more hinged on making enough sales to warrant keeping both series running at the same time than simply outdoing Akane. But I want to be positive on this one. Not only is it by a popular duo, but it's gorgeous, and the story looks to be interesting, at least so far. So I might see how it goes from chapter 2 onwards. The second manga in the batch is Kill Blue by Tadatoshi Fujimaki, the mangaka behind Kurokuno Basket and Robot X Laser Beam. After two sports manga you'd be led to believe we'd see Natrik from the mangaka, but nope, instead we have an assassin school manga. And I gotta say, I had some problems when I saw the premise of the series and even its first couple of pages, so let's get into the story and see why. This one is all about the legendary Idman Saka. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, Juzu Ogami, who after being sung by a specially modified bee, does not become bee man, but instead regresses back to the body of a middle school kid. Because of this peculiar effect, his boss decides to make him infiltrate a middle school where his daughter is going to frequent to see if the place is good enough. And that is the main takeaway of this chapter. The rest of the chapter is filled with school shenanigans that give us some more insight into Ogami. He gives a super awkward introduction because he does not know how to talk with kids or even act like one, and as someone who's never passed fourth grade, he finds out that he loves to study and learn, 
And at the end of the chapter we have the action part, where he saves two girls from a pervert and it helps the class get a little bit closer to him. There's good stuff in here, but there's also a little bit more we need to have in the next couple of chapters for this series to fully work. First of all, this manga is going to struggle a lot with similarities to other popular series. The adult turning into a kid will remind people of Detective Conan, and while it's not an extremely unique plot that only Conan has done, the design of the character only strengthens that connection. The secret infiltration mission on a school will remind people of the currently popular Spy X family. Even though both manga are different, the popularity of the series will cause people to relate it to. But I think the manga that is closest to is actually the worst one to be similar, that is Sakamoto Days. Both manga are about a legendary Itman, and while the plots are different, both seem to thrive on the exact same kind of battle, and it's one kind of battle that Sakamoto is already close to perfecting. The action scenes in this chapter were not bad, but when reading it, you can help but feel like they are the poor man Sakamoto fights. So if this manga is going to try to be more of an action manga, it's not gonna cut it. Its chances of survival, in my opinion, lie in the other half of the chapter, and the school's slice of life segments. To be fair, they are the main part of the chapter, so it's not too far-fetched to assume that this is going to be a school manga first and foremost, and in that sense, while there is also a decent chunk of school manga running right now, like Witch Watch, Blue Box and Cypher Academy, I think its series are doing their own thing and Killer Blue can definitely coexist with them. However, my problem with that part is that we need to get more student characters. This chapter was very much a solo show, it was about Ogami and no one but him. Sure, we got two nameless girl characters, which I hope don't become romantic interests for incredibly obvious reasons, but when the second most important student in the chapter isn't even given a name, it tells you a lot about their role in the story. That's what we need moving forward. More focus on the school characters and their dynamic with Ogami, because honestly, Ogami is an interesting character so far, and there is a lot of space for some co-women's cool interactions in a school setting. I hope we don't lose that in favor of just a bunch of action scenes where the different key part is that the guy is just a kid, because the magazine does not need that right now. Through this, both series started in the best time that they could in the foreseeable future. Like I've said in pretty much every video about Rookie Monk that I made in the last year, the magazine is full. It's so full that being good is not good enough. Good series are going to get cut and they're going to get cut fast, especially if you keep having batches of four series. However, we should also note that the magazine has just cancelled five series and we aren't even sure if the cancellations are done, even though I'm pretty sure that they should be. And these cancellations include two older titles, High School Family and P6. That means that there is potentially up to two spaces for brand new series to thrive as long as they keep the next batches in the shorter side. Now, one of those spaces is most likely going to be filled with Ichinose's family, at least if that is supposed to be a long-running series, but that still leaves one spot, and I think one of these two series has a really good chance to be one of those, of course depending on how the next two series are received, but out of all of these, my bet would actually be on Tenmaki Cinema. In three weeks, we'll be back here to talk about the other two of the batch so if you want to be here for it don't forget to click the subscribe button and if the video is out there's going to be a link on the left and there's also a playlist of all the videos on the series on the right and if you watch it till here thank you very much and i'll see you next video